let's review order of operations. Order of operations in the, around the world requires that we as mathematicians and scientists come up with an organized pattern of how we would do mathematics in, in an organized fashion. And that involves that we've all decided that we would always do what's in the parentheses in a mathematical equation first. After that, if there were any, any exponents involved, we would raise those bases to the power that is noted um, next. After that, in a mathematical sentence, we would multiply and divide, but caution, not to multiply first, because the word multiply is written down here first. We would work from left to right in the math sentence, and if division came first in the problem, we would do that first, because we're working from left to right. So in this problem, it is required that we decide to take 24 divided by 3 first and get 8, and then multiply by 2 to get a value of 16. If we did not work from left to right in this problem, if we thought we were supposed to multiply first by taking the 3 times 2 and getting 6, 24 divided by 6 gives us an answer of 4, which is an incorrect answer. This is very important to work from left to right in um, completing something using order of operations. It is also true in the last sta uh, stage of working something that I should work um, the addition and subtraction working from left to right. Some people remember this order of operations by the sentence, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Uh, the P in please goes along with the P in the parentheses. E in excuse goes along with the E in exponents. My dear Aunt Sally, or Sarah, and some people also use the phrase PEM DAS. Parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. The bottom line is to be successful in an algebra course, you need to know the order of operations and you need to always follow it. I'm going to go ahead and do about seven examples now, um, starting with some basic um, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and then involving some exponents and parentheses. Again, please write those rules down and memorize those. Here's our first problem. If I asked you to take 14 and add 6 times 6, order of operations says that you should multiply before you add. So would you please call this the number 36, and now you are ready to add 14 with 36 and get an answer of 50. So a pretty simple problem. The next one I'd like to do is to take 32 and subtract 8 divided by 4 minus 2. So order of operations says I should multiply and divide before I add and subtract. So I'm going to have to take 8 and divide it by 4 and get a value of 2. Please bring everything else down. This is 32 minus that quotient, minus that 2. And even here, would you please consider doing one thing at a time and working from left to right. So 32 minus 2 is 30, and then I subtract 2 from that, and I get a value of 28. Our next problem has some exponents in it. Let's take 7 and add 2 squared. So 2 to the second power means 2 times 2, which is equal to 4. And so I have 7 plus 4, or 11, and I had to do those exponents first before I added. I'm going to put a subtraction sign in front of something raised to a power in the next problem. Um, I have 10. This is a subtraction sign minus the value of 3 squared. 3 squared is 3 times 3, or 9. This does not mean a negative 3 squared. It means that I should take 10 and subtract whatever 3 squared is. In this case, 3 times 3 is 9, and get a value of 1. Be very careful of that. Sometimes we will put a negative sign in front of a number and put that in parentheses and ask you to square it. This is not in parentheses. That will come later. Let's take 20 plus 4 cubed and divide it by 8 minus 4. So order of operations says that I should do the exponents first. 
So 4 to the third power is equal to 64. Would you please do nothing else except for that and then bring down every symbol. If you would want to be extremely successful, your best habit you could get into this semester is just bringing everything down right underneath. No shortcuts, no saving of pencil or paper. Just show all of your work. Next, I'm going to divide before I add and subtract. And 64 divided by 8 is 8. So I want to take this 20 and add that quotient and then subtract 4. So again, please work from left to right. So 20 plus 8 is 28. And then when I subtract 4, I get 24. Again, one step at a time. Let's do another that has some parentheses in it. And a, a fairly simple problem, but I just want to illustrate that when you have parentheses, you do what's in those parentheses. So I just want to take 8 and subtract 4 and get 4. And when I have done that, then I just get to apply the operation to that value. So I just want to take 12 and subtract that value of 4 and get 8 as a solution. Let's look at a problem that's got um, multiplication and division and uh, quite a bit of it. So I've got 75 divided by 15 times 4 times 8 divided by 32. So would you please be very careful at working from left to right because this involves multiplication and division and I do not multiply first just because I say multiply and divide. I work from left to right. So 75 divided by 5 is the value 5. And I'm going to kind of be um, fastidious. Maybe that's the, a poor choice of words. But I'm just going to bring everything down. And I'm going to work from left to right. So now I have 5 times 4, which is 20. And next, I'll end up multiplying that by 8. Keep working from left to right. And 20 times 8 is 160. And when I divide finally that by 32, I'm fairly certain that I get 5. So again, work from left to right when you're in this particular problem where I had just multiplication and division. Finally, let's do one more problem. And it's a, a large fraction where there's a good bit of arithmetic in the numerator and a good bit in the denominator. Okay, in this problem, I have to, because of the large um, division symbol here, it is like a set of grouping symbols or a set of parentheses, and it's asking me to do what's in this numerator and then do what's in the denominator before I do the division. And within that numerator and denominator, I have to follow order of operations. So order of operations says that I should deal with these exponents first, and I'm going to go work from left to right. So 5 to the second power is equal to 25. 4 to the third power is 64. And because I'm working from left to right, I am allowed to do both of those in one step. Down in the denominator, 9 to the second power is 81. And 2 to the second power means 2 times 2, or 4. This is just a subtraction symbol. So I have the 81 minus that 4, and plus 1 to the 5th power is 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, which is just 1. Let's go ahead and finish this numerator by working left to right. So 25 plus 64 is 89, and in a minute I'll subtract the 3 from it. In this denominator, let's work from left to right. 81 minus 4 is 77, and in a minute I'll add that 1 to it. Let's finish those two up. So I have 86 in the numerator and 78 in the denominator. And I happen to have noticed that these two values are even. So I'm going to go ahead and divide a 2 into each one of those. So 2 divides into 86 43 times. And 2 goes into 78 39 times. And my final solution to this problem is 43 over 39. Again. When you are uh, arithmetically simplifying a problem, you must follow order of operations. You must do anything that's in the parentheses first. Following that, you will evaluate all exponents. 
Then would you multiply and divide working from left to right? And finally, would you add and subtract working from left to right?